ventura california is often referred to as the city of good fortune because of its affluent communities laid-back lifestyle and near constant sunshine in may of 1996 Michael Daly arrives at his son's school, confused about why his wife Sherry has not picked up the two boys as planned. Okay, sorry for keeping you waiting. Bye-bye. Guys, ready to go? If she's not here, Sherry should be at home, where she runs a small daycare for neighborhood kids, providing lots of friends for their sons, Max and Devin. But Sherry's not home. And after several hours, with no word from his wife, Michael calls the police. My wife dropped my boys off to school at 8.30 this morning, and she's been missing them. I called the hospital, I called the high patrol. She's gone. Uh, he called the desk officer at the Ventura Police Department. Uh, he was informed at that time that uh, uh, there is a 72-hour waiting period before you can file a miss missing persons report on an adult. What is her mental condition? She has a psychological disorder now. Perfect job. She's stronger than I am. Come on in. Mike, where's Sherry? You know, I don't know. She's missing. What? Parents of the children at her daycare center are soon searching for her. When they came to pick up their children, they said, well, Ventura's a small town. Uh, we'll go out and we'll find it. Uh, so the uh, patrons of the daycare business uh, started driving around the city and uh, they located her van in the parking lot of the department store. But the discovery doesn't raise hopes. Instead, it just adds more mystery to Sherry's disappearance. There were uh, suspicious circumstances. Her purchases were in the van, her keys were in the ignition, her identification was attached to her keys. Uh, so it was unusual that she would have those items in her van and be nowhere to be found. Now, police agree to launch an immediate investigation. Sherry Daly had no reason uh, to be missing. She had every reason to uh, remain in the community with her daycare business, caring for her children, going about her daily life. There was uh, no reason for her to suddenly uh, just disappear. Immediately there were questions of what could have happened. Could she just have left? And her friends said there's no way she would have just left on her own. Michael Daly fears the worst. He was telling uh, friends and neighbors that he just uh, had a suspicion that she had been nabbed. Police confirmed 35-year-old Sherry had gone shopping that morning when they spot her on security camera video in the department store where her van was found. We have her on tape at the cash register and then leaving the store. And those are the last uh, known photographs of Sherry Daly. Other shoppers come forward with information. There was one witness who walked by a car parked in the department store parking lot, and she saw a woman sitting in the car that was obviously wearing a blonde wig. Uh, the witness also noted uh, the person in the car had thick pancake-type makeup on. It was uh, so disturbing to her that she looked back at the license plate at the rear of the car, and she noted that the license plate appeared to have been altered. Just a few minutes later, Sherry left the store with her packages. The mysterious woman in the blonde wig and makeup makes her move. A blue Nissan Altima pulls up and parks behind her. A woman gets out, approaches Sherry, and they have a brief conversation. Sherry steps out of the van, turns around and compliantly puts her hands behind her back and the woman handcuffs her. She escorts her to the Nissan and places her in the back seat of the Nissan. Each of the witnesses that saw the event uh, all thought the same thing. 
that it was a police officer making an arrest. But police confirm that neither they nor any other law enforcement agency arrested Sherry. We know it was an abduction and uh, a kidnapping. And ordinarily, in these kinds of cases, they have very bad outcomes. The following morning, Michael and the boys, eight-year-old Devin and six-year-old Max, go searching for her, armed with flyers. We love her a lot, and we want her to come home today. Michael also uses the media to appeal for his wife's safe return. It worries me because it falls out of Sherry's character. She wouldn't get into a car, It'd get into the back seat. Somebody should know. She wouldn't leave her boys. Friends and neighbors organized their own efforts to find Sherry. There was an overwhelming coming together of the community uh, following Sherry's disappearance to form search groups and pass out flyers and just do whatever the, the, the community could do to try to get leads for the police and, and assist in recovering Sherry. Her disappearance interests Leela on a personal level. When I first began hearing about what type of a person she was, um, it, it was very, very distressing. She was a wonderful, wonderful, sweet woman and was very, very much devoted to her family and to her husband, Michael. But it appears that Michael may not be as devoted to Sherry. Police soon learn he's been living a double life, filled with drugs, sex, and a not-so-secret affair with a woman who dabbles in witchcraft. In May of 1996, police in Ventura, California, are searching for Sherry Daly, a devoted wife and mother. There had been an abduction. A woman wearing what looked like a disguise handcuffed Sherry Daly, put her into a car, and drove off. Police examine her relationship with her husband and discover that for Sherry, it had been love at first sight. They were sweethearts in high school. It was the only, only boy that she ever loved. They ended up moving in together right after high school and eventually got married. And she was very, very much devoted to him. But Michael becomes bored with married life. He began having uh, extramarital affairs with various co-workers at the grocery store where he worked uh, throughout the duration of their marriage. And he was able to get away with it because, frankly, he was a, quite a charming fellow um, on the surface. And Sherry was so deeply in love with him that she was willing to do anything to preserve her marriage. His latest lover and co-worker is Diana Hong. And it's no secret. We learned that Michael was having a long term, very open affair. Michael Daly was having an affair with Diana Hahn and had been for two years. Uh, it was unusual to us because most husbands, if they're going to have an affair with a woman, go to great lengths uh, to conceal that affair. Michael Daly was, I'm having this affair. If there was anything you can do about it. This is what I want to do, and this is what I'm going to do. And everybody knew about it. It also seems as though Michael has finally found his true love. Michael Daly and Diana Hahn considered themselves soulmates. As Michael's feelings towards Diana intensify, he becomes increasingly resentful towards Sherry. Michael Daly had very little respect and really very little love or caring for his wife. Sherry, despite the fact that she was just completely in love with him and would have done absolutely anything in the world to keep him and, and try to make him happy. Uh, he could have cared less about her hurting her feelings or her emotional well-being. Diana Hahn, on the other hand, she was cute. She was his style. Diana likes to be different and gains a reputation for having strange beliefs. But that's an extra attraction for Michael Daly. Diana Hahn was uh, interested in the occult. 
and in witchcraft. Michael Daly also believed in, in similar uh, odd things. It's, it's going to be, be you and me forever, Michael. Sherry feels compelled to fight for her marriage. Excuse me, get out of here. This is my husband. He is a family with me, and you are not a part of it. He is my soulmate. Sherry, at one point, uh, confronted Diana Hawk and basically told her to leave Michael alone. But he's made up his mind and moves in with his lover, abandoning Sherry, although not revealing his true intentions. You're beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, he did not tell uh, Sherry that he was going to be moving in with Diana Hahn in an apartment. Michael told Sherry that he was going to, to move out for a while so that he could uh, sort of reassess and think about the situation. And eventually she found out about it because Michael would pick up the boys, their two sons, and take them over to the apartment and they would be with Michael Daly and, and Diana Hahn would treat them as her, her sons and they would have this little family role going on there. But police also learn Michael Daly is keeping secrets from both women and has an insatiable appetite for drugs and prostitutes. Michael's pursuit of extramarital affairs, be it with Diana, other women, prostitutes, is so many different things. It's the need to prove himself, it's excitement and risk-taking and thrill-seeking. It's all of these different things. It's power. Sherry tries again to woo her husband with a new look. She said she had to do something drastic to get him back, and she lost all of the weight. She was going to compete with Diana Hahn. She was going to get her husband back, and uh, she worked very hard at doing that. After several months, Sherry believes that she's won the battle. Michael moves back in. What she doesn't know is that his decision is not driven by love, but by a lack of money due to supporting both women. The expense of having a home, having an apartment, that was cutting into his money for drugs and prostitution. And eventually, he took Dinah Hahn and parked her back in her mother's house. And he went back to Sherry Daly. Outwardly, Michael plays the role of the good husband. But in reality, he's still seeing Diana Hahn, who is reluctant to share him and starts making his home life difficult. Now, once more caught in a love triangle, Michael's animosity towards his wife grows. He would call her fat. He would, he would call her unattractive. Um, you know, j just general, you know, nasty remarks about her appearance and how boring she was and he didn't have any interest in her and, and that sort of thing. Just extremely hurtful. No, no empathy, no caring for her at all. As the investigation continues, detectives also note that his concern for Sherry's safety starts to fade. He never participated in any of the searches. To the contrary, he would be with Diana Hahn and his two sons, and they would be uh, out having lunch, they would be down south looking at new jet skis to buy, and, and have absolutely no interest in participating at all in the investigation. When investigators arrive to interview Diana Hahn, Michael's out. Hi, officers. Ms. Hahn, she was wearing lingerie, uh, somewhat revealing. Maybe, uh, she invited us in. Michael, we know you're here. Come on out. He came. Uh, out of the back bedroom. Come on down, will you? We're going to need you two to get dressed. Come down to the station. To Detectives invite the couple to visit the local precinct for questioning. They asked Diana where she was when Sherry was kidnapped. She got up in the morning and she went to on a bicycle ride, an exercise ride, she called it, from her house in Port Wainimi to Surfer's Knoll in Ventura. Then she sunbathed there and rode her bicycle home. 
these are long bicycle rides. What it told us as investigators was she was accounting for long periods of time in the day uh, that we would not really be able to check on. Uh, how can we check on somebody that's out on a bicycle ride? Very difficult to follow up on that. Police are still interviewing Diana when they get a call from one of her co-workers. Uh, the employee uh, asked the detective who answered the phone, have you seen the scratches on Diana's forehead? When she came into work on Monday, the day of the abduction, she had scratches on her forehead and her face was red like she had been in a fight. You, we uh, asked her to move her hair. and there are two very distinct scratches right in the middle of her forehead. And we're like, Diana, how'd you get those scratches? Diana Hahn is now a prime suspect. But investigators are baffled as to why Sherry Daly would allow herself to be abducted in a crowded parking lot by a woman she has met several times. And they still don't know if Sherry was simply married to an uncaring husband or a man with murder in mind. In May of 1996, detectives in Ventura, California are questioning Michael Daly and his mistress over the apparent abduction and possible murder of his 35-year-old wife, Sherry. After a tip-off from a co-worker, detectives see that Diana has been injured. Diana, how'd you get those scratches? She goes, oh, 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 um, well, when I was on my bicycle ride. Guys were whistling at me, and it, it just distracted me, so I fell off the bike. It was very suspicious. While the community has been desperate to help find Sherry, her husband's routine has hardly changed, hey. spending hours with his lover. Hey, hey. Michael Daly's attitude following the disappearance of his wife um, was one of nonchalance, non-caring. He, he didn't even make any effort to show that he was sad or worried or, or concerned at all. He would walk around the community and he would have a grin on his face. He had no concern whatsoever. They're allowed to leave, but together are now the prime suspects. Investigators delve deeper into Diana Hahn's background. She was born in 1961. A childhood accident had a profound effect on her life. A basketball backboard fell on her head, causing a severe brain injury for which her family received compensation. Over time, she appears to make a full recovery. Diana ended up functioning just well. In fact, when she came back to school, she resumed being an honor student. In addition to living off the insurance money, Diana also takes a series of unskilled jobs. She remains a single girl, but enjoys dating men who are attached or married. A person who repeatedly does these kinds of things usually has difficulties being too close to somebody, preferring distance, and difficulties with intimacy on a true basis of a normal, healthy relationship. In 1993, Diana Hahn starts working at the same grocery store as Michael Daly. The attraction is instant and intense. I think that she had a somewhat mundane uh, life and, and he came into her life and uh, he turned her upside down. Uh, swept her off her feet, so to speak. Their bond is deepened by their shared Japanese heritage. Hey! She starts taking karate classes. Hey! 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 Even though she was tiny and petite, hey! uh, there were manipulation techniques that she learned at the beginning, and she was stronger than she looked. She was working with a couple of other males in the, in the classes and was able to handle them pretty good. Diana's confidence grows. And she decides to try her luck as a model. Her whole life is changing. And she starts to feel like Mrs. Michael Daly. 
Diana Hahn would speak with co-workers about uh, how she uh, really wanted to be with Michael and, and the things that she would do to get her way to eventually um, become uh, Michael's wife and the mother of Sherry's two sons. Michael tries to please both women. Michael Daly and Diana Hahn took Michael's sons and had a, a professional family photo uh, made during the Christmas season. Uh, at or near the same time that uh, Sherry and Michael had photographs made with their two children. So he really saw this as uh, two separate families. The lovers also cruelly flaunt their affair to Sherry. Diane Hahn liked to put it right in Sherry's face, what was going on. Uh, one of the most obvious examples of how she accomplished that was it? she gave Michael Daly a pillow with a silkscreen image of herself, Diana Hahn, on the pillow. That had to be one of the greatest humiliations that Michael Daly forced Sherry Daly to, to bear. But investigators learn Michael eventually talked of going beyond ritually humiliating his wife. I wouldn't need a killer. Somebody else would do it for me. See, that's the beauty of this whole thing. Michael made no bones about how he hated Sherry and he wanted to see her gone and uh, made comments such as, uh, you know, if she disappeared and they never found the body, no one could ever be prosecuted. But all the talking in the world isn't enough to warrant an arrest. And the police are stymied until a crucial piece of evidence surfaces. Police find the vehicle used to abduct Sherry Daly. Sherry! Could she still be alive? A week after Sherry Daly was abducted from outside a store in Ventura, California, there's a dramatic development in the case. The car she rode off in is discovered at the local airport. A uh, car rental had rented a blue-green Nissan Ultima to Diana Hahn. They had a rental contract with her signature in two places and her initials in about five places. This was the first big break we had in the case. Michael Daly also looks increasingly guilty of something to investigators when he decides to give away all of Sherry's clothes and files for a legal separation. Michael Daly did not act like you would expect somebody whose wife was uh, missing. He was not acting like a distraught husband at all. A forensic examination of the car confirms investigators' worst fears. There was uh, signs of a struggle inside that car. There was a lot of blood. It looked like somebody had scrubbed the car. The carpets had been cleaned. But the killer had missed some spots. You can't have the kind of struggle that happened in that car and get all the evidence. What the car gave us was the ability to write search warrants and now search the house of uh, Michael Daly and Diana Hahn for further evidence. Both Michael Daly and Diana Hahn are taken in for questioning. I have no idea what happened. How does that work? You can check with them at the store. Michael pumps the police for more information. He was uh, always trying to turn the interview uh, to find out what we knew. He was trying to manipulate the investigation. But Diana isn't so confident. When investigators try to get her to crack by suggesting that Michael is accusing her of being a lone killer, she shows signs of coming clean. Her confidence in Michael was shaken um, by the interview. Uh, she was saying, can I just talk to Michael? Can I just talk to Michael? The couple is left alone together, while detectives discreetly monitor their conversation, hoping one of them will say something incriminating. But the plan backfires.
Diana was obviously an emotional wreck uh, by that time. And uh, Michael uh, started to try to comfort her, but interestingly, uh, he was using uh, what I could only describe as a karate technique. <laughs> He's going, Diana, look at me, look at me. He goes, see it. And it was uh, very interesting because you could see him build her back up. I've never seen anything uh, like it all my years of uh, interviewing suspects. I've never seen uh, someone brought from the brink of uh, an emotional breakdown. Well, that's about eight hours of interviewing down the drain. Detectives aren't ready to give up. Do you know who this is? Sure. Think she's gonna look anything like that when we find her? She could have changed her hairstyle. Oh, her hairstyle's gonna be changed, all right. Her body's gonna be bloated, be full of maggots. Does anyone deserve that? Did she deserve that? <clears throat> all we want is the body. We gotta find this woman before the wolves get to her and the coyotes and everything else. You don't think she's dead? Can't help me, huh? Okay. Fair enough. Good luck in court. They placed you under arrest. Do you understand that for murder and kidnapping? Although Michael remains free. Authorities find more evidence to implicate Diana Hahn, including a check written to a local wig store. In interviewing the owner of that store, uh, she clearly remembered Diana Hahn coming into the store, uh, asking her uh, that she needed a wig that looked official. Uh, she needed something that would make her look like a police officer. Police also discover another check made out to a local department store which leads to more disturbing evidence. A very official looking pantsuit, very similar to what was described by the witnesses at the scene of the abduction. Windproof matches, lighter fluid, a hatchet, uh, crazy glue, and large plastic bags. Uh, all these things we felt that uh, she purchased with the actual killing in mind. And there's one final confirmation that only she could have made those purchases. She would sign everything by check using her good old green inked pen, which by coincidence she happened to have on her at the time of her arrest. Diana Hahn has left a damning trail fully implicating herself in Sherry's abduction. But the question remains, what happened to Sherry Daly? On June 1st, nearly a month after going missing. Sherry! 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 Oh Sherry Daly's body is found in a canyon outside Ventura, about 12 miles from where she was abducted. It was a very emotional day for us. It's the finality of finding the body, and now you know, and you know just how horrible her death was, it uh, kind of hits home. The coroner reveals that she had been viciously beaten, stabbed repeatedly with a knife, and decapitated with an ax. The manner of the homicide, as brutal as it was, speaks to the comfort level that Ms. Hahn had in fulfilling an act like this, something that she'd probably fantasized about dozens if not hundreds of times as she mentally rehearsed it but also speaks to the level of animosity and hatred that was being channeled into that action, as well as maybe an enjoyment over the removing of that person's life and being there to directly experience it as it's leaving the person's body. Diana Hahn is formally charged with kidnapping and murdering Sherry Daly, but her lover remains free for now. It was frustrating uh, that Michael had an airtight alibi uh, because we could see his hand 
in everything that had happened, uh, but it appeared that he was manipulating Diana Hahn to do his dirty work for him. And uh, if things went wrong, that it was going to be Diana Hahn that took the fall for him. But Michael's reckless past is about to catch up with him as a former lover comes forward with secrets to tell. And finally, he too starts to talk. In the spring of 1996, police have charged Diana Hahn with Sherry Daly's murder. Over eight hours of questioning, she continues to offer investigators nothing but denials. But there's not enough evidence to arrest her lover. Michael Daly has, has consistently denied that he had anything to do with his wife's murder, that it was all Diana Hahn. Uh, he didn't know that she was going to do it. He didn't know that she had done it after the fact. Then, a former girlfriend comes forward. She reveals they shared some interesting pillow talk. He talked about wanting to kill his wife. He talked about how to get away with murder. He asked if she could kill somebody. He had a history of trying to solicit a former girlfriend to murder Sherry in the same exact way that she eventually was murdered by Diana Hahn. It was the exact fingerprint of what he wanted done to, uh, to Sherry. The case against Michael grows stronger when a search of his home produces a letter written by Sherry just days before she died. It was a final desperate attempt to try and force him to seek help for his drug habit. She told him that he had to start rehab on Monday or she was filing for a divorce. And I believe that that is what caused Michael and Diana to suddenly have to rush to commit the crime. It takes six months for investigators to form their case before Michael Daly is finally charged with killing his wife. When Michael Daly was finally arrested, I think people expected that. I think there was some relief that justice would be done. The killers are tried separately. Diana Hahn's trial, the stronger of the two cases, is first. This trial was very newsworthy to the community. Every day for this trial, there was a line of spectators, just court watchers, citizens, retired people, lining up in the hallway to get a seat in the courtroom. Prosecutors highlight the preparation for the crime and how she had failed to cover her tracks. About three days before the murder, purchases started to be made by Diana Hahn. She used a check to buy a wig to disguise her. She also bought a badge in the days preceding. Uh, she bought a uniform. The day before, the murders went and rented a car. She bought some poster board and she used the poster board to alter the license plate on the rental car. She's buying the stuff to do it. She's laying down the plans. She's implementing the plans. She's the one that's carrying out the plans. So why is that? She's willing to do whatever it takes to impress a male partner so that she can get that validation. Yeah. Plus, she's just very willing, apparently, to do these kinds of things. The kinds of things Diana is willing to do became all too apparent to Sherry Daly on that fateful day. Sherry was abducted. As soon as she walked out of the store, Diana Hahn was waiting for her, uh, as seen by, by eyewitnesses. They had seen the car that Diana Hahn was in, sitting in the parking lot uh, for at least 30, 40 minutes before Diana Hahn approached Sherry Daly's van. Go to the police station right now. Let's go. Sherry put her hands behind her back. She was handcuffed. She was pushed into the back seat of the car, and off the car went. To this day, no one really knows if Sherry recognized Diana, despite her disguise, or why she allowed herself to be handcuffed. But prosecutors have a theory. 
Why would Sherry submit? Why would Sherry turn around, put her hands behind her back? What, what would cause this woman to get into this car? Um, because it was a short conversation and there was no struggling or anything like that. She, she voluntarily got in the car. And it was because she was probably told, and it's a reasonable interpretation on everything we knew, and she was probably told that your husband uh, has been arrested uh, for drugs. We found drugs in your home. Uh, you need to come with us. And that would have been something that, that Sherry would have complied with. Based on the forensic evidence, prosecutors present a chilling scenario of that final car journey. We believe a struggle ensued during, during the drive, which is about uh, 15 to 20 minutes up to a remote site in um, nearby mountains. Sherry Daly appeared to be dead, but made one last desperate battle for her life. We found Diana Hahn with injuries to her face. So we're confident that Sherry Daly um, was still living when those handcuffs were first taken off. She probably passed out from the initial trauma and loss of blood and came alive uh, before she was ultimately beheaded with an ax. Called a, a dry cleaners right after um, she had dumped uh, the body, asking, "How do you clean uh, a lot of blood out of the back seat of a car?" We didn't have DNA, but uh, we certainly had a tremendous amount of other evidence. Her lawyers accept that she played a role in the murder, but deny she was the killer. The jury doesn't believe her, and after a six-week trial. Diana Hahn is found guilty and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. There were cheers outside. People were just glad that she had been convicted. Six months later, Michael Daly stands trial for the murder of his wife. This is a man who thought that if he didn't participate in the actual killing, he never would be charged or convicted. Uh, of participating at all. The evidence, although circumstantial, is overwhelming. His lawyers claim Diana acted alone. But prosecutors maintain he instigated Sherry's murder. The label puppet master fit Michael Daly perfectly because he proved himself to be the master manipulator. He got Diana Hahn to do everything that he wanted her to do and do it just the way he wanted it done. Phone records confirm they were in it together. We knew exactly where she went, and she called him every time she stopped. The whole time that Diana Hahn was sitting there waiting for Sherry Daly at the department store to kidnap her uh, from the time that she got to Canada Larga Road, and then from there, she went to another part of the county and attempted to clean the blood out of the car at a car wash. Uh, and then from there, went to a hardware store to buy cleaning products. Every step of the way, as she called Michael Daly, it painted a very clear picture of, of the conspiracy uh, between the two of them. After a lengthy trial, the jury returns and finds Michael Daly guilty of killing his wife. He is also sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Uh, my heart just swelled. I, I can't even tell you. This is justice. I'll never bring Sherry back. Never. But it, it, was, uh, it was very rewarding in the sense that he did not get away with it, and he thought he was going to you know, get away with it. Daly continues to claim his only crime was loving two women at once. It was my fault because I fell in love with another woman. I saw another woman. That is my fault. As for my wife's disappearance, I'm not responsible for that. But it is my fault that I saw Diana Hunt. Sherry Daly's two sons were left to grow up with Michael's parents and remain convinced their dad's no killer. 
I believe my father is innocent. I mean, as a as a family, before all this all this happened, we were we were a very happy family. Did everything together. We were always there for each other. We comforted each other in times of hardships. And I feel like he, I feel like my father would never would never do anything like that. The boys miss their mom. She was very outdoorsy. She loved she loved going to the beach. She was a very caring person. Oh, always a very supportive, great mother. So we have a lot of pictures of her. We have lost a lot of fond memories of our mother. For me and my brother to keep her alive in our hearts. This case is a case that uh, will stay with me for a, for a long, long time because of Sherry and what a wonderful human being she was, what a great person she was, and um, well, what a loving mother she was. It's just horrifying that, that, that this ever should have happened to her. It's important to understand who Michael Daly was. He was someone who was interested in one person in this world, and it was just Michael Daly. He was interested in where he was going to get the money for his next snort of cocaine, where he was going to get the money for his next tryst with a prostitute. He was not interested in responsibility. He was interested in the next good time. That's who Michael Daly was. Diana Hahn. She was someone who was looking for love, looking for someone who cared about her, and she had the misfortune of coming up against someone like Michael Daly, who convinced her that he cared about her, that she was all important in his life, but he really just used her to get exactly what he wanted. 